Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Forza Horizon 5. Again, we are a sim racing channel, I know, but I do want to take a moment here to go back to actually one of my favorite arcade racing games for a long time. I did start Forza Horizon series in general pretty late with 4 when it came out and I loved the hell out of it so when they announced 5 was coming out I was pretty excited to play this. I played it a lot on launch and actually there are some videos on my channel of me doing so and then the Hot Wheels expansion came out. Loved playing that and then I really fell off. I mean the Rally expansion came out after that and I covered it and it was kind of a eh. But it's been well over a year and a half since then. And I wanted to just discuss my thoughts on coming back to this after such a long period of time. So this all started when I was on my Steam Deck and I was going through trying to just open games. There, I had so many games downloaded, I was just trying to get them up to open, and I would just be choosing random games. And finally, Forza was the one game that did. And I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't done this in a while. And I'm like, well, I want to see how the Hot Wheels expansion has been going. So I finally loaded up and loaded in here. And my god, I did not realize how much I missed this because I've been playing Gran Turismo for a really long time and it's kind of a serious sim in my mind. Yes, it's not the most serious sim, but I treat it fairly competitively. So to jump into, this is just the most arcadey of arcade things. You're in a Hot Wheels, on a Hot Wheels track in the sky. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of miles above Mexico in supercars. And it just... It, it reminded me how much I appreciate developers like Playground Games, where it's... They understand the market currently, where it is, hey, you know, we've got... The market currently is dictating that sim racing games are exploding in popular popularity and the idea of an arcade game is no longer really as popular as it once was as we'll say and there's a hint of nostalgia when i play this because it is nearly uh we're coming up on its third anniversary which is crazy to think so there's that, but then it's that nostalgia of, you know, playing Hot Wheels related games, growing up, playing, you know, the, for some other people, you know, playing the original Forza Horizon back in 2010. And it's just that hint of nostalgia from the 2000s of these just otherworldly arcade games that are meant to be stupid, that are meant to be fun, that don't take themselves seriously. And I think that element is really missing from the, today's games. Just the ability to take a look at themselves and say like, we're in the middle of the sky on an orange plastic track. Don't ask me how these cars are staying on these track. Don't ask me how they're still driving in a straight line at 200 miles an hour when you've got things like wind and gravity and it's just it doesn't matter because what matters at the end of the day is that you're having fun and these games do an exceptional job at that so going to forza horizon 5 specifically i chose the hot wheels expansion because the Mexico side of it is great. It's a huge track. I enjoy it. But unlike Forza Horizon 4, the developers had made mention, oh, we're going to have season. This, there's there's going to be so much variety. You're going to have jungles and you're going to have deserts and this, that, the other thing. 
But ultimately, when you look at the map, 10% of it is jungle and 90% of it is just sand and dirt. And I had a feeling, a worry that that was going to be the case when the game first came out. And then I sat down and played it and I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what I was fearing. So Mexico is an exceptional country. It's got a lot of culture, a lot of landmarks. But when you're making a racing game with one of the largest racing game maps to be made. Mexico is a little... If you're expecting diversity of environment, Mexico is not it. And that's okay. But when you're talking about the scale of the map, you know, racing game fans are expecting, well, diversity. So it just kind of feels like they're just copying and pasting sand over sand over sand over sand. Which is a little bit sad. That being said, even though Mexico is not as diverse as an environment in a racing game as, for instance, Forza Horizon 4's, you know, England, Great Britain, or is not as diverse as, for instance, maybe Colorado or, you know, Italy or Europe as a whole. The one thing that I do really appreciate is when the Hot Wheels expansion came out is you have a very diverse environment. Yes, you have like a deserty kind of sandy island. Yes, you have a kind of a jungly island, but then you've got the introduction of like the ice area. And yes, you get a little bit of the ice and the top of the mountains in Mexico but not to have such like levels of slippiness of the ice and having an actual like really detailed volcano, which again, in Mexico, Mexico, they have a little bit of that, but not to get up so close and like driving loop to loop surrounded in this area. So my point being is I feel the Hot Wheels expansion really helped grow the map in Forza Horizon 5. So when they announced the Rally expansion, I was hoping for, again, a little bit more diversity, but then when they literally copied and pasted the same of the 90% of the map that we already had, I just didn't play it because it's just more of the same. So that's why I love the Hot Wheels expansion so much. So as you can tell, coming back to this a year and a half later, I'm trying, again, I don't want to have so many negative critiques about this, but there's a lot of positives and negatives where it's just like, it's really cool, but, or it's, you know, this isn't great, but this is, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, there's a lot of differing opinions that kind of leave me kind of in the middle here as far as like the experience of driving and that of course when we come to the driving and the handling it's an arcade game and it's super fun the cars are pretty understeery yes you'll have moments like these where your car is just you'll just have these really dumb crashes for no reason but like I said we're Keeping our expectations here, we're in the middle of the sky above Mexico. <laughs> so no, we're not expecting a full sim racing experience. So I think Playground Games did a fairly decent job with the handling model. It's more, it's more of the handling model that we've come to expect with the Forza Horizon games. So it's more of the same, and I'm fine with it. I like it. I can't get enough of this here, this nighttime with all these beautiful gradients of all these beautiful colors. I love looking over to the ice area and seeing like the purples over there. And then you've got like the greens and the blues over here. And then we've got like the desert area where it's more the yellows and the reds. It's just, this is what I mean about diversity when it comes to an environment. It's super good. And I love it. This this night time is awesome. Of course, I can go back to say, as we all come to expect, the graphics, they're fine. They're... 
They're not Gran Turismo 7 level of realism, and that's okay, because this has a little bit of an art style to it, and again, it's following that more arcadey feel. It's giving it definition and personality. And with so many racing games, they're all going for that hyper-realistic graphical quality, and they all end up looking the exact same, this weirdly washed out, unsaturated, dull looking game. And I just, I wish more developers had, for lack of better words, had the balls to create personality in their art style. Because if you make a game that is hyper-realistic and the entire market in that section is also going to hyper re have hyper realistic games as well they're going to look the same and how so many of these sim racing games and so many racing games nowadays say we're going to go hyper realistic and at the end of the day they look at their game and don't see the fact that they are identical to everything else i don't know it's it's really weird to me that they don't see that so like I said, congrats to Playground Games. I love, I love what they've done with this game. I really do. Coming back a year and a half later, one of the big things that I've noticed is just how well it plays from the standpoint that once you get the game set up, it is a really nice and smooth experience. The only issue that I remember having was just having these random drops of, like, from network connections. I will take I will take that back. Is since I've played this recently, I haven't had like any network connection errors. I remember constantly on release, like every 30 seconds, it would say, you know, drop from network, drop from network, drop from network, and it was just like. It was an incredibly annoying experience, especially when I was trying to play with friends at that time. And it was just, like... I don't need to be reminded every 30 seconds that this game is bugged, you know? <laughs> and, again, this game... I haven't had, like, any bugs coming back, which is... The only reason why I'm bringing this up, and why I'm really putting emphasis on this... It's because games of the same series, i.e. Motorsport, is... Yes, it is only a year old, but we're still dealing with some bugs, and we're still dealing with some stuff going on with Motorsport, and it's just... Not... It doesn't play as well as Horizon at this point. It's not as smooth as an experience. The one thing that I will give props to Forza Motorsport is even though it is a huge game the loading times aren't terrible. I mean they do have some lawn loading times but not to the extent that Horizon does. I'll uh, give an example here. Alright so we're actually going to test this out here. I have my stopwatch here so we're going to hit start and play at the same time I signed in like yesterday. 49.94, so 50 seconds just to get into the title screen, not including logging in time. All right, 2.22, we've stopped, we've finally finished optimizing PC, whatever that means, I don't know. So that has been a minute and a half or thereabouts optimizing the PC. 258 to get to this screen and we're starting in the rally stage area which i don't want to be so i'm going to go travel back to mexico and we continue our loading time total of four minutes and five seconds to get to mexico but it's not over yet. 
Because I want to go to the Hot Wheels area. So now we fast travel to here. And we have another loading screen. That wasn't too bad. That was about five seconds. Not bad. <clears throat> it won't count this as loading time because we're actually driving. And then I actually want to drive to here. Fast travel. Guess what? Would you like to fast travel? Yes, I would. It's another loading screen. Five minutes and 16 seconds to get to the Hot Wheels Island, and we're still not done. Because now, let's just say I want to go here. So I'll we'll fast travel. About five seconds. Not bad. So then we'll do solo. Sure, that's fine. And another loading screen. And... Six minutes, one second of loading screens from hitting the play button on Steam to finally getting into a race. <sighs> so yeah, that being said, over six minutes to start to finally get into a race in the correct area. Yes, you can shave off a couple of minutes if you wanted to start in the rally area or if you wanted to play in Mexico. But I just found it absolutely crazy that in 2024, a game that is rec well, almost required to be on an SSD, which this is. This is downloaded all 160 gigs on an SSD and still takes six minutes to get there. I would expect that time from a hard disk drive in about 08 with like a 40 gigabyte game. But I just find that I want to talk to playground games and say, look, like why? I'm not a computer programmer and even if they provided a decent explanation, I'd probably still not understand. But one thing that I will note is that now in 2023, 2024, developers, I love this, are starting to put in as quote unquote free DLC, high resolution texture packs. So when I downloaded Diablo 4, it was going to be an 80 gigabyte game. And then I started looking through and they had a little option that you could click off saying, hey, if you don't use 4K resolution, you don't need this texture, like the high resolution texture packs. And it's like, okay, that's kind of nice. I use 1080p monitors, so it's like, I don't, I really don't need it. So I click it off and it saves 40 gigabytes. It saves half of this space. So... I'm going to have to look through. I don't believe that Forza Horizon 5 has this, but if they do have a spot where you can unclick and reduce the down, reduce the file size, get rid of some of those high resolution textures, I would love that because I'd imagine that would drastically improve the loading times because it's like loading in 4K textures that aren't going to be used, you know? <laughs> so it just odd it's really odd that we have a game with such long loading times in the day and age that we're at it just it doesn't make any sense to me now i will admit that one of the cool things about this is the amount of stuff that you can do in horizon 5 and i absolutely love that so if we look here on the map it doesn't look like much here but then you toggle on everything so we've got, of course, the XP boards, you've got tank balloons, you've got your traditional speed traps, uh, you've got the championship, uh, the little missions here. 
And then, oh. Here we go. And then you had all of these Hot Wheels Academy where you have to complete all these little activities and missions. And I realized when I came back to this that I didn't actually have all these completed. So I spent a good couple hours just going through, you know, the last parts of X class. And this one here where it's, you had to post the clean times, these are super difficult. And of course, you can't forget things like all the different accolades that you can start going through. Uh, of course, can't forget event labs. We haven't really touched on much of the multiplayer functions, whether it be, you know, Horizon Open Tour. You can go through and collect these different badges. I mean, this game is extensive with the amount of stuff that you can do. And I love that because it you can you can be any type of player and you can have something be fulfilled here and we're we haven't even talked about oh where are we the festival playlists i did i'll be honest i really don't like these personally i did spend oh when i was really playing this i did spend like a week or two going through and completing all these challenges and it was very, 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 very time consuming. But if you were a diehard player, one that just loves the hell out of this game, who just really has the time to put into this as like you do your full time job, you don't have a significant other and you get home from work and you just play this game and you have hours and hours to spend. It's amazing. It really is, but for me personally, I just don't have the time to fulfill all this, so I, I never really got into uh, completing this, especially with the fact that there are certain cars that are just, like, you will only see them once or twice, and if you just don't complete it during that week, and uh, you just won't see it again. So when it comes to Forza Horizon, I just can't get... I just can't get into it that much, especially with, like, the, the car collection. Like, Gran Turismo is the first game that I really wanted to, like, 100% complete it, especially with the car collection. Because it's like the cars will rotate, they'll come back. But when there's a game like this, there's so many cars. There's 879 of them. And they rotate, and then there might be a week that'll come and go, and it'll be gone forever. It's like, oh, man. Man, oh man, oh man. And this here was kind of what I was referring to. This is the clean lap challenge. So basically you go into the event and you have to go into rivals. So you can choose B class, A class, S class, or well, S1 or S2, I believe. And all you got to do is you got to race around and you got to set a really good time, but you can't hit the wall. Now the problem is, is because it's Hot Wheels, these track are just curving all over the place. The gravity is being adjusted depending on where you are. There are times where you'll get launched into a corner and you just have to do a brake stand because the booster just literally sent you into the corner. Oh, and then it's even better because then you'll have the times where it like does a twist over itself and uh, uh, I'm not going to restart it. That's fine. We're fine. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just... My point being with everything I'm done discussing here is on release, I had no idea how large of a game this is going to be, how much stuff you could do in this game, how much content there was, and just how many hours and hours and hours and hours of entertainment that you could have. Yes, like every game, it's got its issues. But the more than the more that I let time pass, the more that I have this respect and appreciation for such a incredible game. And again, this is just me touching on mainly the Hot Wheels expansion. Like there is so much more that we can do down specifically in Mexico with the festival playlist, with the individual seasons. And then there's even more in the rally adventure. It's just, there is so much content. 
So at that point, this it, this game truly, I think it was starting to be touched on a little bit in Forza Horizon 4. But in my opinion, I think this game really starts to blur the line into MMO territory. Yes, it's not like a WoW MMO, but I mean, you do have your story-driven missions every now and again. But I mean, to the level of content that you can do with this, the fun thing that I enjoy is... I think sometimes people online are pretty rude, so I'll do things on my own. You can do 99% of this on your own. Or you can do it with a friend. Or with a league or a party of some flavor online. So yeah, it's just... That's why I enjoy about this game is, again, the amount of stuff you can do and then the flexibility of how you can do it and who you can do it with. And on Steam, I know it's... It's not mixed reviewed. It's I think it's positive or like mostly positive. I don't think it's as favorably reviewed as Forza Horizon 4. But in my mind, I think this is going to be an arcade game that I will continue to come back to in five years, in ten years. Yeah, they'll probably be Forza Horizon 6 or 7 or whatever. I know those will come out eventually. But this one, it's just... I like it. I don't... Personally, I don't think I need to really justify my opinion any more than I have. It's just a fun game, because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. So coming back to this a year and a half later... Like I said, I had a lot of differing opinions, but at the end of the day, I think I'm ultimately impressed. This is a fun game. So, that all being said, let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section down below. If you guys are in agreement, if you guys enjoy this game, or if you guys have a lot more problems, or tell me about your experience if you joined very early on and you're still playing, you know? I want to get all those thought processes from you guys down in the comment section down below so again thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for watching if you enjoy this content make sure to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video again thanks so much take care have a great day bye